Hi guys, so let's talk about the barbell row today. Uh, a staple um, back building exercise uh, that there is. It's a compound a fundamental barbell exercise, a barbell strength training move. Barbell row is typically rowing in a hinge position. Now if you are not familiar with the hinge position, a uh, hinge is a fundamental uh, position where uh, you drive back with your hips and uh, you really engage your glutes, your hips and the hamstrings and uh, you are actually in that, you are standing in that position. So if you see this is the hinge, you are hinging from the hips, you are not bending from the lower back, you are hinging from the hips and that is how you engage, you position your body to engage the, uh, the entire musculature uh, to be tight and then row from there. So once you are in a hinge position, uh, if, if you are starting out, learn to hinge first, uh, start with a body weight hinge, gradually add some weight and then progress to a barbell row. In the starting position of a barbell row, the barbell, the bar, you have to take care it should directly be vertically down uh, direct, the, the point where the uh, arms meet the shoulders or the, the delt uh, lat delt joint this behind the armpit this area and the elbow should directly be uh, vertically uh, together right and the barbell should be down it should not move out should not move you know beyond this should not happen. You should not touch your uh, hamstring because this will only happen when the weight is a little lighter and uh, then only you can control this or this. Otherwise, it's gonna go vertically down. So you have to practice bringing it vertically down. Simultaneously, you don't have to look up. Don't look up because if you try and look up, the entire musculature, the spine goes along with it. Okay, so your cervical spine goes, your thoracic goes, thoracic is fine, but then your lumbar also goes. So you're breaking the hinge pattern. So you're breaking the tightness that we've caused. That is number two. Moving on, of course, to lock in that hinge position, you need to brace the core 360 degrees. For the core brace, you have to take a deep diaphragmatic breath and then isometrically hold that position, uh, that brace. Then you'll automatically notice, you observe that your hamstrings are now taking the load, your glutes are taking the load and you're ready to pull the bar. Now, pulling the bar is one solid motion. You're static and you have your elbows directly down. While pulling the bar towards you, you're going to drive your elbows back. Instead of imagining driving your wrists to your sternum, you drive your elbows back automatically the motion the rowing motion will happen so you see here my bar was here and I drove my elbows back and I am able to row now during all this motion of, of the rowing uh, whatever one second two second rep your core is tight you are, your hinge position is intact your neck is neutral and you are driving the elbows back. Now ideally, when you are driving the elbows back in a standard barbell row, um, so with a sufficient heavy weight, you should drive it to your sternum, uh, probably the, the top part of the abdomen, and your elbows should be 45 degrees to the back. So if this is your back, these should be your elbows, 45 degrees. Right. This gives the most, um, this recruits the most muscles. You are recruiting your lats, your upper back, lower traps, rhomboids, the middle back. So you are recruiting a lot of musculature when you are doing it with the 45 degrees. Now there is a step, uh, there is a thing known as a three point row. Okay. So this three point row is where you are positioning yourself in such a way that you are able to target different areas of the back. So the hinge remains the same, the, the cues remain the same, it's just that the elbow position goes from being flared out 
to 45 degrees and to almost parallel to the body. So we have a three point row. If you want to emphasize the upper back, you take a lighter weight, you hinge. Now this time, we're going to hinge in a little bit deeper. This was your normal hinge. This is probably another 10 to 15 degrees below. So that you're really down and you're holding the bar wide. You're doing a wide grip barbell row with your elbows. Automatically the elbows will play around with that. So it's a wide grip barbell row emphasizing the upper back. For the middle back you have the standard 45 degree row. So you have 45 degree hip hinge and you have elbows at 45 degrees with the hand placement at around shoulder width or just uh, just beyond that. The last one is, here, is actually a, uh, if you've seen Donian Nates uh, performing barbell rows, uh, he used to perform very heavy 400 pound barbell rows. Now he also used a lot of body English which of course happens when you are uh, performing the exercise with heavier loads. Especially if you've seen Larry Wheels, these days he's just performed uh, heavy ass uh, barbell rows, body English. You have to really drive your, your lower body into it, right? So for that, when you're in a very heavy uh, load, your hinge is a little manipulated. So you have 70 degree row, approximately 70 degree from the horizontal or probably at 20, 25 degrees from the neutral hinge, the 45 degree hinge. So with that uh, row, you're, you're rowing to a sternum. So you're here, you're rowing to a sternum, you're engaging the lower lats really, you're engaging the, the, uh, the uh, lower part of the traps, your middle back, and especially, you know, you're, you're getting used to heavier loads and rowing with them, getting a grip strong as well. So uh, that is your three point row. Right? So if you want to emphasize each of these, if you're really short on time, you want to do something for the back, you do the standard 45 degree row. If you want to do something as a max effort, do a, maybe a, a, a Dorian Yates row. Right? If you want to emphasize in the upper back, it's, if it's lagging, do the wide grip, elbows flared out in the row. Right? So um, one more thing I want to highlight is uh, that some people would want to get more out, out of a lighter row. They would want to uh, really slow down the, uh, really hold and slow down the eccentric. The row is a hinge, it's a static hinge. So this hinge, you remain static here. So you are here for maybe 30, 45 seconds if, you are, if, if the set uh, you know, goes longer. Or maybe you are here for 10, 15 seconds. The more you are there, the, the more uh, there's a chance that you may lose position. Okay, and then things may go wrong. So my personal suggestion with the row is if it's, if it's very light, if it's let's say uh, something where you can, you can curl for 20 reps, 10, 15 reps, if you are rowing with that, then you can actually apply isometric holds in the hinge position, slow negatives in the hinge position. But if it's a substantially heavier load, then don't try to do that because then you may lose position. Okay, and you know, even Dorian Yates used to prescribe row is a power exercise. You do it as a boom boom, right? You do it as a as a you can do a lot of lot more reps, but you keep the reps short. Right? You do bang and you do bang like like this. You can always control the weight. You don't have to really be reckless like that. Control the weight and that's it. Control the weight, go down. So that way you're going to get the most out of the exercise with a good amount of load and you're not going to lose position as well. Try it out. Uh, see how things uh, share for yourself. So um, this is how you uh, are rowing with the barbell or the barbell row. So guys, if you have any questions, please reach out. I'm happy to help.